Hi, I'm David Stoker, and today I'll be going through an overview of the ServiceNow incident management integration for Cisco Intersight. The incident management integration is now available in the ServiceNow store, and if you go to the store and search for Intersight, you should see that integration available along with some information on the features provided, and then also a link to the installation guide with details on what I'll cover in this video along with a link out to the email for any support, which is intersight-integrations at cisco.com. Before I get into how to configure the incident management integration, uh, I do want to point out that it's recommended that you also install and run a service graph connector for Cisco Intersight. This is a separate application. ServiceNow requires a different application for using service graph. Service Graph will provide all of the inventory sync from Intersight and configuration items in the CMDB, which will tie back into the incidents. I'll post a link here for how to install and use a Service Graph connector, but again, recommended for use and installation ahead of going through installation and configuration of the incident management integration. Now we'll take a look at Intersight API key configuration and other configuration in the incident management integration. So within ServiceNow, I can search for incident management after I've installed it, and I'll see the options for configuration, including that Intersight configuration link. And if I click that, I'll come into the main configuration screen. Uh, this is where I'll enter my API key ID and secret key. This is also where if I'm running a virtual appliance for Intersight, I can set this on-premises checkbox, and I can change my host name to the fully qualified domain name of my appliance. Uh, here I'm going to be using SAS, so I'll stick with the SAS hostname of intersight.com. Uh, a note there, that's for the Americas instance. If you're using the Europe-hosted uh, SAS Intersight, you'll want to change to that Intersight URL, and I'll post a link here for where that's at. But once I have that hostname set, I'll go ahead and enter my API key ID and secret key. So back in Intersight, I've logged in and we recommend use of a read-only role. So if you don't have it, you can create a read-only role in Intersight. Log in with that read-only role, which I'm showing here, and then navigate to System and API Keys. I can generate an API key here, give it a description, and then make sure it's a V2 key. So that version 2 key, and I click Generate. Now I can copy these to the clipboard. I'm going to copy my API key ID. And I'd also recommend saving the secret key to a text file. Uh, that way you'll have it for later use if needed, if you need to re-enter it in ServiceNow. Um, but I've copied that API key ID, I'll paste that in ServiceNow. And then here I'll copy my secret key and paste that into ServiceNow as well. I need to save this record in ServiceNow. And then on this screen I can also set up other configuration for where incidents will go. Uh, and I can also check whether or not to create incidents from Intersight alarms. I can set what it, alarm severity is brought in to ServiceNow. And then I can do the same thing for advisories. I can choose whether or not advisories are brought in as incidents, and I can select advisory severities. Here I have all severities of alarms and Intersights coming in. Again, save anytime you've made changes there, and now the plugin is ready for additional config. So the next part of config is to go to incident management and under sync is scheduled jobs. And if I click that, I'll see the import alarms. And if I go in to configure this, I can set this to active and this will run periodically. The default is every 15 minutes. I can update this record. And at this point, I'm ready to import those alarms and advisories from Intersight. Uh, in the incident management integration, I can also look at the logs. And this is where I'll see activity coming from the integration. Uh, I can set the debug level back in the main configuration page, but this will give me information on any errors or other problems I may have and where to look on how to fix those. So we'll take a look now at the Intersight portal within ServiceNow. So again, from the incident management plugin, I've got a link to the Intersight portal. And this is a ServiceNow powered portal with a dashboard where you can pull in alarm and incident related information and then some good visualizations of how incidents are being created 
and what alarms are causing those. So one of the nice things here down toward the bottom of the screen is incidents raised by alarm code. Uh, this would provide you the fault codes coming in and you can customize which faults actually cause alarms back in the main Intersight configuration pages. So a nice visualization of what's causing incidents and again what you can do to configure those back in the main Intersight configuration pages. So the last thing I'll look at today is ServiceNow incidents. So if I search for just incidents, there's a few ways to get incident information. I'll go to Service Desk and Incidents. And I see my Intersight alarms that are being pulled in as incidents. I'll click on one of those incidents. It'll give me details on the underlying alarm that was pulled in, including the fault code, severity from Intersight. And then for configuration item, this is where the service graph connector, the separate application for Intersight, is pulling in that information and these incidents are being associated with that. So here I've got a rack mount server. If I click its dependency view, I can see how it's connected back up to UCS equipment, which are fabric interconnects. And I've got uh, all that data available on that under on that impacted configuration item. Back in the main incidents table, uh, if I search in this sh uh, short description for Intersight advisory, just like for alarms, here I'll see the advisory information coming in. And this again has a description of the advisory, including what field notice or uh, security CVE ID it has. And again, that configuration item that's impacted, uh, which you can look at and pick up any relationships. So thanks for your time. And for more information, be sure and visit intersight.com help.